All right, here we go. Here we go. Let me ask whether Victoria is on the line. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. All right, let's go. I just want to make sure that everyone are uh, uh, on the line. Where is um? Where is uh, Lizzie? Where is Lizzie tonight? Okay. Please, please let everybody be aware that I am back from California. I'm back from California. Amen. Yeah, I've rested and um also i always want to make sure that um what i have gone to do i have celebrated that event so tomorrow i am going to celebrate all the success that we have had i need to celebrate them because if you don't celebrate your victories you won't be having any more victories well we have started receiving testimonies about the California, um, the California program, and it is huge. It is huge. It is really huge. If I if I am to 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 begin to talk about it, you won't. Many of you will be jealous of the person. Yeah, and another person too has received a very big promotion. So I just want to keep it. I don't want envy to set in. As you will say, ah, why is it that you pray for this person? Uh, they receive everything you prayed for me. They don't. Tonight, I'm going to teach you how to receive from God. I'm going to teach you how to receive from God. So let's go to, let's go to Mark. There are, there are two things I'm going to emphasize within the next few days. So that those of you who truly uh who truly want to um let let me begin by saying this so many people out there are really worried by fear I am going to devote a lot of my time to, to, to minister to people who, who do not know how to have faith. There is a way we do it. I prayed with Victoria this evening and we ended with the way that we should be praying so that you do not need to struggle with whether God has said your prayers or not because there are many of you who are suffering from a lot of when when you pray you become you begin to panic you have anxiety doubt and fear And the, the issue of faith and miracles, signs and wonders and healing, they are not things that you force on people. They are things that someone must really want it. If you are struggling with how to receive things from God, 
I want to be your coach. I want to coach you on how to be a receiver. I think that is going to be the topic for tonight. Florence, make sure you capture that. Because I'm not sure that Victoria is on the line or Geneva. Mary, please capture that. How to receive from God. Many of you are willing to give. Within your means. And some of you above your means because you really want to receive something from God. When you hear me talking about having my citation jets for business and for ministry, of course it's the same thing. I'm real about it. I'm not joking. It's not a daydreaming. I'm putting in all the hard work, all the sweat and tears and blood I'm putting in all the smart work, but there is also something else that you need to be aware of. Every child of God is called to prosperity. Prosperity is not for pastors only, but for prophets and apostles. Ministry is not just for those who are called by God. It is for every child of God because every child of God is chosen and called to do ministry in their marriage, ministry for your children, for your mom, for your brothers, for your sisters, for your children. The way you handle your job whether you're working for government or for private corporation or your own individual business becomes a ministry. So ministry is not only when you are telling people about Jesus, but what are the tools that you come into the game that will make people want you or want or people to want who you have. <laughs> I want you to be aware tonight that every child of God is called to prosper. Do not worry about people who tells you that this is not a part of the gospel, that they are telling you a lie. Don't worry about them. That the most important thing is preaching the gospel. Yes, it is. But how do you even preach the gospel without prosperity? You are in a church and there is a need and everybody is broke in that church. That's a shame. You go to a church and all the, that they receive in an offering is a hundred bucks. That's a shame. <clears throat> How do you run a kingdom with a few change? When I, what I mean by change, I mean, I mean nickels and dime, penny. So when many, many, many people talk about that, oh, I'm following the kingdom. I'm following kingdom principles. You are a joke. I don't want to say that to insult anybody. Even the world out there knows better. So I'm not trying to give people direction based on trying to make you feel good and you go and sit back. No. It's because the gospel itself is prosperity. Being born again 
is unemployment. You've never heard this before. When you become born again, when you become spirit-filled, you become employed Amen. by God himself. No one has told you this before. God is always using me to bring new, new revelation to you. And I hope you are taking this very seriously. Because they told you you were born again to go to heaven. Heaven for what? To go and see God? Really? Yes, that's part of it. But you were not born again to go to heaven. I'm now letting you know it. God did not let you to be born again to go to heaven. You got born again so that you are connected to a kingdom. And to a king. You are born again in order for you to be connected to a kingdom. And a kingdom, when you say kingdom, it means something huge, something big. There is, there is no kingdom that exists without riches. A lot of riches. Amen. Am I right in what I'm saying tonight? Amen. Amen. Okay. When you talk about dominion, you think that it's just a theory? You think it's just uh, something from the Bible for you to recite? Because what really worries me is a lot of pastors have money, but their congregation are broke. Come on now. I want to, I want this ministry to be able to raise a lot of human beings who are born again, spirit-filled, humble, and very wealthy. Please turn that thing off. Turn that thing off. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. You see, some people get offended when you begin to talk to them about the next thing that they have to be involved in after being born again. Because this is what they don't teach you in church. After being born again, they begin to teach you doctrine. And no one will not teach you business. No one will not teach you how to go for an interview. No one will not teach you how to go for an interview and qualify for the top jobs. Nobody want to teach you the laws of love and relationship. Nobody want to teach you the laws that governs money. The laws that govern human relationship. The laws that govern riches. No one want to teach you about that. Instead, they teach you doctrines. And you remain in doctrine until Jesus comes back or takes you back to himself. And then when you go to heaven and you see how wealthy the king is, you will begin to ask for a trailer pack <laughs> and tell Jesus this is not right. What is not right? That he shouldn't be a king? He shouldn't be wealthy. You see, what I'm telling you is what I know. This is not what I read. This is what I know. For a fact. Many of us, God allow us to come from poor families. So that that becomes your gospel. That becomes the reason why you are so angry about it. That after being born again, 
God now sent you to begin to liberate people from poverty, from sickness, from stupidity, from witchcraft. I hope many of you are aware that many of your countries are under religious and political witchcraft. I hope you know that. My job is to raise quality people. That's what I'm looking for. That's why I go, I'm touring America to promote people. If you want me to come to your city and release a prayer of promotion into your life, call my office, 316-665-4400. And when I release a prayer of promotion on your life, except you don't want it, you'll have whatever you want. Matthew 11, 22 to 24. Let me, let me just hint to you about something that you need to know. Somebody should open to Matthew 11, verse 22 to 24. When you see it, you read it. When you see it, you... When you see it, you stop me and then you start reading it. Read it very slowly. Hallelujah. There are things you need to know. Because many of you think that God called you. God called you to pay for things. There is a place where God called you to pay for things. And there is a place where God did not call you to pay. He himself want to make the payment for you. Why, why, should, why should somebody give somebody else a jet? Why should somebody else pay for somebody else's limousine? Why should somebody else pay for people's mansions? Because God has moved on people to do it for them. And many a time people will do things for you and you don't even know who. They are. If somebody has seen that portion, please read it. Mark. Oh, is it Mark 11? Yeah, Mark 11. I think it's Matthew. No, it's Mark 11. Please, please, please. Please. I hope I'm not still jet, jet lagged. Mark 11, verse 22 to 24. Go ahead, my dear. And Jesus answered, saying to them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast Stop, 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 stop. Start again. And Jesus answered, saying to them, Have faith in God. Okay, stop there. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. And let me tell you what it means. If because you think that God is too far away in a different planet, that because of it, you cannot have faith. Because it's not there face to face for you to go and approach him and hand over your list to him. Or go and kneel before him and bow before him because he's right in front of you. You find it easier to talk to a human being, but you find it difficult to talk to God. Then this is how you deal with it. When you pray, you say to God, I trust you. I am willing to believe you. I am willing to receive what I've just asked you. And I receive it. Hallelujah. See? Amen. See, faith is a promise God has made to you. Yes. Let, let, me, let me make it easier for you. Regard faith as coming into agreement with 
a promise God has made. Let's say the bank said to you, come back in two weeks and we will give you that loan for $2 million for you to buy your dream home. They gave you that, they gave you the award. They said, listen, your name is on the list. We just want you to come and sign the paper. We'll get the paper ready in two weeks. Everything about you is sorted out. We will not tell you no. We've looked at your history. We've looked at your everything about you. So come back in two weeks. Now, when you leave, when you leave that bank manager and you enter your car, will you begin to say, um, I think they may change their mind. They may send me a letter in the mail that they have denied me that I'm not qualified. Is that, is that, that's how some people think. They, they begin to say, I'm, I'm not sure I qualify. Even after the bank manager has told you that you qualified. Jesus. You have been told that you qualified. You paid your tithes. You've sowed your seed. You've done this. Now, one more thing is coming. For those of you who are the prince and princesses, your club is coming. Hallelujah. You've sowed special seed. That qualified you. You are born again. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. That qualified you. You are now a son or a daughter of the living God. You belong to his dominion. You belong to his kingdom. That qualified you. What more do you want? Hallelujah. The bank manager told you you qualified. He showed you the paper. He asked you to read it. You saw your name written there. And this is going to be prepared legally. Two weeks time, come. Sign. The money will be released to you. Go and get your dream home. And you enter your car. And somebody come behind your back. And begin to whisper to you that do you really believe that guy? You really believe that, that woman? They've told this to many people. They didn't fulfill their promise. You go back there, they tell you, oh, we discovered something about you. La, 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 la. You begin to doubt. Many of you do not know why I always want Victoria to be in what I'm doing. Many of you don't know. Since the very first time she called my ministry, since the very first time that through me, God did something big for her. She has the gift of faith. Hallelujah. Yeah, she does. Amen. Hallelujah. It's very easy for her. That's why many of us, our education blocks us. The divorce we've had blocks us. The evil relationship we've had with people that did not work out blocks us. And we can't trust God, we can't trust people, we can't trust the Holy Ghost, we can't trust nothing. And therefore we got nothing. And that's why, let me tell you tonight, if you belong to my ministry and you are a covenant partner, you have been called to do the impossible things. Yeah. You better believe it. If you are not willing to do the impossible thing, you better leave my ministry. You better leave Jesus alone. You better go back to those trailer park mentality. <laughs> and go and live there. Because one day you will see all my covenant partners, they have their jet, they have everything. They are coming for the prince and princess celebration. And you will say, that's not fair. That's not right. Life's not fair. Because you have a trailer park mentality. I am not trying to insult those who live in trailer park. Because that's what they qualify or that's what they want or that's where I put them. But if you find yourself in a manger like Jesus, did you hear that Jesus was born in a manger, was raised in a manger, died in a manger? Is that what you read in the Bible? Oh, so why do you want to live in a manger? If the Son of God did not live... In a manger. Why do you want to live there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
<laughs> wow. That's something. I want you to be aware. I want you to be aware that you are going to change the way you think. Hallelujah. You're going to change it. God has made you a promise. Tell God that you are willing to accept that promise. God, I'm willing to accept that promise. Yeah. Let, let your mind, let your mind and your head be telling you something completely different. Let it be telling you doubt. Let it be rehearsing some drama in your head. Why, why that thing cannot happen? Why scientifically it cannot happen? How do you defeat it? You said, Lord Jesus, I am willing to believe what you have promised. I am willing to accept this. Let me tell you, if I'm asking God for a citation jet, which is what I'm doing now, I'm asking God for a very big home and a citation jet. I'm just, I'm just being fair. Yeah, just being fair to you so that you know what I'm praying about. I'm praying for my ministry to reach the seven point something billion people in the face of the earth. That's what I'm praying about. And, and when I pray that prayer, my mind will be telling me how. How you live in America and everybody in India, everybody in the Philippines, everybody in Barbados, everybody in, um, in China, in Japan will hear about you. I say, well, this is what I said to whatever voice is telling me that. How has it been that Coca-Cola company is, their headquarters is in Atlanta, Georgia. But they've been able to put a bottle of Coke in everybody's hand. At least they've tested it once or twice. Who doesn't know about who doesn't know about who doesn't know about Coca Cola? Who doesn't know about Dr Pepe, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Marketing. Seven Up? Marketing. There you go. If hey. if McDonald if McDonald started here in America and they have McDonald in Japan and Korea. And in Africa, come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey. So let the thing that is telling you why you cannot do it, why you cannot have it, let it keep rehearsing it in your head. That's fine. Because your mind is given to you for movement, for direction, for thinking, for making choices and willing things. So some of these things will be happening of its own. And many a time the devil is involved, many a time you are involved, many a time your experiences is involved, they are rehearsing drama in your head and in your mind. Don't worry about it. It doesn't mean that you are doubting or you are in fear. The only way for you to deal with it is, Lord Jesus, I ask you for this. I am willing to believe that I receive it from you and I got it now. There you go. I got that man, Jesus. And I got that thing, joy. Whew. Where is Samantha tonight? You need to be here shouting hallelujah. Samantha, you are getting something big. So come out. Come out of the closet. Wherever you are, get out of the closet. Because you have been moved into the finest thing that you've ever seen in your lifetime. Hallelujah. Yeah. Where is Jessica? Where is Jessica tonight? I've already told you. I am now reinforcing it. God said I should tell you tonight that you are moving into the finest of the things you ask him. The finest, the biggest. Rene, I have been sent to tell you that you are about to change G. 
You are about to change J. J is J, not G. You are about to change J and you are about to change H. You know what I mean by that. And you are also about to change M. You know what M is. There you go. I am asked to tell Florence, you are going to walk with your shoulder. You will be like you are seven foot tall because he has come through for you. <laughs> there he goes. And let all the devils from, and let all the wicked people on earth or in hell, let them all speak to you why you cannot have it. And your job is to tell them why you can have it. Since they cannot read, and you can read, you can read for them what is written in the covenant for you in the article of constitution between you and God. Read to them what is in it. <laughs> Let them know what is written in the Constitution. There is a Constitution. Something has been written for you. Therefore, somebody has been, since you were born, there is someone, there are people, and there is someone who have been working so hard to talk you out of what belongs to you. That's what it's all about. You don't have money to buy a house. Why not ask God to, to, to get you a house? Hallelujah. And tell him the kind of house. Don't try to go and pity God and tell God, well, I can only manage these four bedrooms, you know? I don't care whether they are small as long as they are houses and you are trying to pity somebody who has all this wealth. Are you crazy? Somebody is telling you, you don't have the money to buy a house. You don't have the money to buy this. You don't have the money to buy that. You see, there is a place where God needs our money. There is a place where God look at us and say, ah, ah, ah. You see, the best things in your life are not going to come with your money. I hope you know that. Amen. If you are a prince or a princess of the Most High God, it's going to be given to you. Hallelujah. Don't let your mind talk you out of it. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Don't let people talk you out why you cannot. Oh, that city is so costly to live in. Well, are you aware that unbelievers are living in that city? Even if it's very costly, they are the ones who are making money in that city. Right. Are you aware that in New York, there is a place? I don't know. Nancy, Nancy can help me here. There is a place in Manhattan. Nancy, how much is it for just a townhouse? How much is it? I'm not sure. I think she's always on mute, so we don't get her when we want her to speak. Yeah. There, there are places in New York where the amount of money you need to live in, say, just a two-bedroom house. Have you seen those houses on uh, HGTV where you have four-bedroom house? It is so funny, so luxurious, and so on. Look at it. They say three million U.S. dollars. And you say, uh -uh, how can somebody just buy this three or four bedroom house? I know that it has all this grandeur and the greatness and all of that. By the time you resell that house, that house will be like $10 million. Let me tell you tonight. I'm not joking. This is real. God wants to move you into good thing. Stop telling God that you don't have the money. Jesus. God did not ask you about money. Finish that reading. Florence, finish that reading. Let's see whether there is somewhere where God asks you to bring money. Uh -huh. Finish reading it. Let's see. Because that's the mistake we make. When we finish reading that, 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 uh, that, um, those, those verses, you hear some pastors goes back to 
they try to tell you, you know, you need to work very hard. You need to work your butt off. You need to do this. You need to uh, to give a lot of tithe and offerings. You need to do this. You need to, they, they saddle you with a lot of Old Testament responsibility. Let me tell you, there's a place for that. And there's a place not for that. Where we are reading is not for that. The big things of your life are going to happen <laughs> they, they, have you have are you aware i was listening to a guy that was speaking yesterday about how he bought his first plane another somebody another wealthy guy took him to the man do you guys know what are the tires that we use is it flingstone is that what they call those tires Is it Bridgestone or Firestone? I don't know what they call them. Is it Bridge, Bridgestone? Okay. Is the guy in charge of that was selling one of his planes. One of his planes. And this guy came to buy a plane from him. People gave that guy um, they gave him half a million dollars because he simply said that he wanted a plane then people said really you want a plane okay they started con to contribute he, he went god in fact god told him that he's gonna give him a plane Jesus. now he has two big houses he went to go and get these guys this this uh this guy uh, from a plane he told the guy can i start paying now the guy said no Let's do it like we normally do business. The guy said, I don't trust bank. I don't trust this. I don't trust that. But I trust you. Shake my hand. Shake my hand. Look me in the eye. And he did. He said, I don't need the money now. It's from next year. It's from next year. Somebody else furnished, somebody else furnished that plane for this guy. See, if it is God, it will be easy for you. Yeah. If it is God, it just comes of its own. Yeah. Doors open up. Every good thing I have received has come from what seems to be like impossible. I didn't put a dime of my money to it. I'm now confessing to you guys yeah. what you should know about me. The best thing that has happened in my life my penny is not involved in it. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just letting you know. Going to college, coming to America, being trained, starting a ministry, doing all this, getting ordained, all kind of stuff. Yeah. My penny is not in it. The doors just open up. Itself. Let me tell you what has been happening. Within the last two months, my house has my house has exploded with shoes and clothing. My house is a shop. It's a dealer that mercy. Or oh, I just see penny. I don't know which one it is anymore. My house has exploded with quality stuff. So I'm gonna need two rooms. When I move to my home, I'm going to need two rooms just for my clothes. Yeah. I'm going to need a huge place just for my shoes. Yeah. Just for my jewelries. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm talking about. I have jewelry that will last me for the next 1,000 years if I was to be on the earth. I'm serious. This is not about boasting. This is about you were born without. Let me tell you something. God wants to give you what you did not have when you were born. And you look at others and they had it. You become jealous and envious of them. Your parents didn't have nothing. They were broke. God doesn't want you to be broke like your parent. Or make the mistake your parents have made. They got money, they all lost it. 
and they had nothing and they died broke. Nobody knew their names. And you want to be the same thing. Are you serious? If I come to your city for ministry, you should be prepared to tell me the kind of car you want to drive. The kind of house you want to live in. The kind of man you want to marry. Let's stop this nonsense religion that doesn't do us no good. Come on, Bishop. And when you see, when you see a little rap or country musician, one or two days they bought beautiful things, you become angry. That ain't right. What is not right? Is it Obama's money that he used to become a president? No. Is it Trump money that he used to become a president? No. Go and look at all these guys. Somebody else has always funded them. Yeah. All of them, all these senators you see in, 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 in D.C., all the people in the house, all those high court or supreme court justices, it is other people's money. Other people, even people they don't know, companies they don't even know, are the ones sponsoring them. And you are here praying for God to make your money, the, the, the little job you have, to give you all the money you have, instead of, uh, instead of allowing the kingdom to provide for you. God wants you to have a job right. He tied money through jobs. Your, your money is tied down to your talent and to your creativity. It might be one good thing you did to an elderly man or an elderly woman or a child or somewhere. Somebody from that family comes out and said, that's for you. And all the jobs you've done since you were born is not enough money to give you one of those things. Ooh. Keep reading, keep reading. Let, let's keep reading because I am a witness. My mom cannot help me. My father was back to heaven a long time ago. Those in the family who should have helped me, they all died off. It's like something wiped away the good people and kept the ugly ones and the, and the evil ones. And I said, okay, whatever took the good ones, you take the ugly and the evil ones. And all of them went. <laughs> Yeah. If it is the wicked and the ugly one that wipe out the good ones, then let something come and wipe them out too. Let the whole place be clear. And that happened. Keep reading, my dear. Verse 23. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. Did he say, did he say, whoever bring money to this mountain, whoever bring a tithe and offering to this mountain, Whoever brings his, his or her job to this mountain, whoever brings their paycheck to this mountain, whoever has saved enough money to this mountain, is that what he's saying? No. Whoever got the best job can come to this mountain. He said, whoever shall say, which means what are you about to say? Because you got the promise of God. You got the covenant of God. You are qualified. That is the whole thing. I want you to begin to say it over and over. I am qualified. I am, because you are not saying it. You don't believe it. I am qualified. I am qualified. Why should, why should the sons of darkness push themselves? Why do people push themselves to become leaders, to have money, to have better things, to be in position of authority where they're in charge of money and material resources and stop you from preaching the gospel and living the life because they believe they're qualified? Ask the Muslim people, they tell you they're qualified. Ask the Jewish people, they tell you they're qualified. Ask the Hindus, they tell you they are qualified. Ask the Buddhists, they tell you they are qualified. But as Christians, they hardly know that they are qualified. Jesus. When are you going to begin to know that you are qualified? I am qualified. Hallelujah. Because until you begin to say it, 
Lord, I am in your presence because I'm qualified. I am born again. I am spirit filled. I am paying my tithe. I am paying my special seed. I am doing this. I am doing that. I have raised godly kids. I have been faithful. I am loving. And not only that, I have good looks too. That add value to me. <laughs> Please, I'm, I'm serious about it. People make a whole deal of their looks. When are you going to begin to make a... Look at me. Look at me. Look at my haircut that I just got. I got when I came back. I got me... I, they told me about this, this special guy that give haircut to only business people. So I call him. I say, hey. He said, who is that? I say, this is the Archbishop. He said, oh, okay. Okay. They've told me about... I say, I'm coming down there. Let's try it. I want you... The haircut you are going to give to me... That's always how my head and my hair gonna look. He said, let's go for it. And we went. He signed the contract. He saw. My, my, I mean, he finished giving me the haircut. I mean, I, I am what more than I used to what now. I, that's, I mean, my good looks alone makes me to be what a lot. People who are, who are not even as, as, as good looking as I am, I'm making money and living the good life. They are out there on magazines. Are you serious? I have to be in those magazines. I'm going to chase them out of that place. I'm the one who should be there. <laughs> just, just look at me. Look at, look at me. Look at me. Just look at how I look. Do I not look good? Look at me. Come on. My being born again, oh, that even add more to it. I'm spirit filled. Whoa, come on, more. I have the Holy Ghost. Seriously? That's even add more. I am a prince. I have dominion and I have a throne and I belong to a kingdom of dominion and big, big thrones. Seriously? I am, I am, I am even overqualified. And then, and then, and then, just, just look at, and then you talk about the job you have. Whoa. And then you talk good, and then you look good. Oh boy. That even add more worth. Baby, I'm worth it. Boom, boom, boom. Baby, I'm worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you should be singing to them. You should be singing that to the devil. Are you guys aware that even devils are more legalistic? You know, Lucifer still think that he's worth it. Read the book of Job. The sons of God were called for a meeting. He came. Why? He said, because the God who made you is the one who made me in the first place. So I'm qualified to be there. Did you hear God chase him away? No. God started having a conversation with him. Why? Because he understand, he understood who he is. Even though he's fallen from grace, he still, he knew that his title is still part of the sons of God. He and his people. Because you ask them, they tell you, oh yeah, we don't, we don't listen to him. We don't obey him. We don't like him. But he made us, therefore we are qualified. Go and ask them. That's what they tell you. There was a day that the sons of God came. Who came with them? Lucifer came. Did you hear God say to Michael or say to Gabriel and the rest of the many archangels? Because I believe that there are many archangels. Did you hear, it? Did you hear God say to them, throw that idiot out? We don't need them here. No. Are you even aware that sometimes when God wants to kill somebody, when God wants to remove a, a, a fool from the throne, especially from the throne, somebody from being a president or somebody from in a in position of authority, God wants to eliminate them. Are you aware that God calls a meeting in heaven? He called the sons of God to come for a meeting. Are you aware that evil spirits go to that meeting? Have you read it in the Bible? Is there? Is there? Read how Ahab was killed. Yeah. Read 
how if read 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 when God was about to remove Saul, the first king of Israel, he called a meeting in heaven. And that's where you heard and an evil spirit from the Lord. He did not say from Satan, he said an evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. And he became a mental case. He lost his mind. Go and read the Bible. So God does not just Make good. God does not just listen to all the good people. All, all the weak, those who do not want him, he's still going to use them. When, when, when they are needed for a job, God's going to tell them, go and do it for me. Yeah. Because they still claim that he is their God, even if they don't want him. So they use him. And he used, <laughs> they use his name and he used their skills. Oh, yes. You didn't know about his territory. Now you know. Now you know. Yep. Now you know. <laughs> If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if evil spirits know their legal rights, why, 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 why is it that you don't know your legal rights? Hmm. You are qualified. You are qualified for promotion. Don't take this lightly. Make this a matter of life and death. What I've spoken to you tonight. Make it a matter of life and death. And that is how God come through for you. If you don't make it a matter of life and death, uh-uh. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I am qualified. So why should somebody try to disqualify me? There is something that I'm going to be doing for people. I'll tell you when that will begin. I am going to reopen your cases. Hallelujah. If you had a case in court, if a company did not treat you right, and you feel they didn't pay you the money you were qualified for and they use you. It's about time that they are going to be forced to pay you. Anybody that is holding your job will be forced to give it to you. What I'm telling you will begin to happen now. It will begin to happen now. I am ministering to you tonight from my studio and from my, from my, uh, from my, what do we call it? My little library here, my little office here. So you can see, can see the outfits that I use for the holy services here. You can see all those kind of stuff and the, and the books and all of that here. So we are making it relaxed for you. Relax with me and enjoy this. Please tell whoever and whatever that has been speaking into you that you are qualified. Don't take it lightly. And whatever you ask God, whatever you ask God to give you, tell God that you are willing to receive it. That's how you defeat doubt and fear. Lord, I am willing to receive what I've asked you right now, and I got it. Now I want you to pray with me. Eternal Father, wherever you are, touch my hands. Lord, I bring every spirit of doubt and fear and disqualification. I bring them under our feet and I discredit them. 
In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft and voices that has been speaking to us that we are not qualified people, we discredit them and we will never listen to them. Lord, we are willing to receive the things that we have asked of thee and we got them now. Now, let me say this to you. If you find it difficult to believe God for what you are praying for, you need to find time next week and give me a call, beginning on Monday, 8 o'clock in the morning. Please, when you call me, you may begin to tell me your stories. I will hush you. I will ask you, be quiet. Because I'm not dealing with that. I'm going to be dealing with the real thing. I'm going to lead you into the real thing so that you can stop telling your story. And you begin to let other people begin to tell the good thing. I want people to see the changes that are going to happen to you and the changes that has happened tonight. Everybody who are watching this broadcast, you are going to come under a very heavy presence and power of God. And I mean it. Let, let me let me give you let me give you an example for you to carry with you. When Jesus talked to the madman at the cemetery in Mark chapter five, I think so. Yeah, Mark chapter five. And the man he, he asked the man, "What is your name?" What did the man say? He said, "Legion." That's a particular class of demonic group that works under the authority of a principality that is called the spirit of death and dumb. That is the spirit that causes all manners of mental problems and emotional problems. Yeah. When I will begin to teach on a different evil spirit, you will know what you're dealing with. Legions walk under the, the chief of the legions is the spirit of deaf and dumb. You remember when Jesus encountered a father that brought a child who the father said, sometimes the spirit threw him into the water, sometimes threw him into the fire. You remember that? Seizes him. The, the, the boy was suffering from, um, what is it? Seizures, you know? Seizures. Did you hear Jesus say to the, to the spirit in the boy? Did you hear Jesus say, Come out, you spirit of seizure. Is that what Jesus said? Yeah. Was the boy deaf and dumb? No. The boy was not suffering from a... The boy was not deaf. The boy was not dumb. But what did Jesus say? Come out of him. You spirit of deaf and dumb. But was the boy suffering from deaf and dumb? No. It's because that's the architect of the problem. That's the architect. So when I will be teaching and ministering about the different evil spirits and how to operate, you'll be shocked at what you are going to see. But what you are thinking is the reason why this is happening to you might not be the reason. Might be something completely different. And it is when I begin to teach about evil spirit that some of you who are witches and wizards, you will know. It will, you begin to manifest those things while I'll be ministering. About <laughs> if you're a vampire, if you're a vampire witch, if you're a shadow witch, you begin to manifest those things. Yeah, we are going to go there. Because one thing you have to know is that devils cannot keep quiet and devils ain't smart. <laughs> they ain't smart and they cannot eat quietly. They cannot keep quiet. When they eat, they make noises like hyenas or like Tasmanian devils. Devils will always show that they are there. 
When the man said, My, our name is Legion, when Jesus commanded them to leave, what did they do? Did they just obey him? Did they leave? No. Listen, they knew their legal right. They knew what they are qualified for. So this is what I'm telling you about devils. Please listen. If devils knows what they are qualified for, you must know what you are qualified for. If you don't, you'll be broke forever. I'm serious. You'll be sick forever. Jesus. The devils began to negotiate with Jesus about where they are to go, their own safety. Yeah. They began to negotiate with the Son of God. If devils are negotiating with Jesus, why are you not negotiating with him? Wow. Jesus told them, Come out of him. They say, no, no, not yet. Let's, are you coming to, you see, some of the people that Jesus wanted to cast devils out of them, the devil began to say, I, we know that there is a time for these things to be happening, for you to send us to hell. But why are you trying to pronounce judgment when it's not yet time? And what did the Bible tell you? Jesus listened to them. And didn't send them to hell. When he casted out these legions, out of this madman, the devil said, not yet, not too fast. Let's negotiate business because we understand our rights. They said to him, you see, we've been in this territory. We are familiar with this territory. We love this territory. We like, we like this man. It has taken us years to master this. You know that devils, you know, devils and demons are territorial. I hope you know that. They are territorial. They spend time to go to the university of each human being. And that's why they are called familiar spirits. Because they, they master your ways, what you like, how they, of your great, 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 great grandparents for thousands and millions of years. They do. That's why they are super beings. There are a lot of things. See, what took the Jewish people three years to know about that Jesus is actually the king, actually the son of God. It took demons and fallen angels. It took them a second to know that. Ha -ha! That's the kind of knowledge that we want. That's why being born again is a call from God for you to become a full-blown spirit. Please write that down. Being born again is a call by God through Christ for you to become a full-blown awakened spirit so that you can know things in a flash. Hallelujah. Why should demons know things in a flash and fallen angels? And know and know and know as much as possible about you. They zoom in and out of you and get all the all the information they want about you. And you don't know anything about them. Come on, give me a break. Jesus. When they told they started negotiating with Jesus, and they said to Jesus, Allow us to enter into the pigs. We need we need a body to enter into. Because we want to remain in this territory. Don't send us to hell yet. It's not yet time. Did Jesus, did Jesus give them leave? Did Jesus say to them, No, I'm not negotiating with you guys. I'm sending you all to the pits. Is that what Jesus did? No. no. He told them, Okay, you can enter into the pigs. And what happened? Did they enter into the pigs? Yep. They left the human being because the devil have no shame what, whatever they can enter. Because they are immaterial beings. They don't have bodies. They enter into the, into the pigs. That's the lowest they can go. 
They enter into the pigs. And what happened? The pigs also became crazy pigs. <laughs> the pigs became crazy pigs. Mental pigs. And lost their mind. And what happened? What did the pigs do? Huh? They ran, they ran up the hill and started dropping into the water. Boom, boom, boom. And they all perished there. Tell me about it. It will be a different teaching another day. Why the water? Why will they not go to the water? Because the greatest power that controls this physical planet is from the water world. It's from the water world. They return back to where their commander is, the queen of the coast. Yeah. And are you aware that in my culture, the queen of the water is in charge of intelligence and also in charge of madness. Are you aware of that? She is also in charge of healing and curing you permanently. She is also in charge of wealth and poverty. Tell me about it. I believe that. Yeah. That's why you cannot be you cannot be a true witch. You cannot be a good witch doctor, a shaman, or any of this stuff without going to bow to her first. Oh. Yeah. What is in the sky realm in the second in the second uh, second heaven? That is the second sky place where Lucifer and his fallen angel have gone to make their own little paradise. They cannot operate from there to the earth planet without going first to her. She is the one that is that is in charge. Have you guys heard of Bermuda Triangles? Yep. Yep. Have they been able to recover any of the lost sheep or lost planes? No. 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 Why? Why is it that they've yep. not with all the science? Because the scientists are saying, because I, I watch the science, discovery science, discovery days. That's how I know a lot of stuff also. Because I follow science and technology and med. He's a guy who loves power. And you think he's going to give up the only one thing that gives him power, which is military forces? Are you serious? Come on. Come on. I love the ceremony. We can plant trees. We can hug. We can talk. But that talk does not amount to anything. Everybody has their own agenda. Do not forget what I've told you. It's about Somebody making Trump relevant and Trump making someone relevant. And who is calling the shot on both of them? Russia. And that's all I want you to be aware of. Good night. Tomorrow is a very important day in our ministry. Yeah. Something big is going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So I wish you a very good weekend as you start this weekend. It's going to be so good. Thank you. God bless you. I love you all. And thank each and every one of you who supported me, who were with me when I was in Cali. Now let me share something that you need to know. We need people to send in some very good offerings for us to take care of some things. Thank you very much and God bless you all for loving me and Jesus and the Holy Ghost and God the Father and the angels. Bye bye okay. and good night. Good night. Good night everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you Bishop. Thank you everyone.